nice way to celebrate a 150th anniversary. Talk us through it. Yeah, um, good day, good good win, and overall probably I'm I'm pleased with the performance. The first half, if you split the game from being a battle to football, the battle one. It was that as with the, both teams had their points when they actually moved the ball a wee bit, created some chances, um, but it was really about the fight and. Aberdeen were really aggressive and we probably came out second best on that front. Uh, their wide players naturally want to be inside the pitch and that caused us an issue for them picking up second balls. Second half, we tweaked it slightly but we started much better. Penalty, once you get the, the, the first goal, it changes the dynamic of the game and a big pleasing thing for us is then we control the game. We dis our decision making was good and it could have been more than two eventually at the end of the game. It's a tale of two bars. The first one, I don't know if you've seen it, do you feel as if maybe he's got off the hook a bit there? I don't think he means it, but by tripping him, he stops. It becomes it's a 50 50 in the corner, and then it's for our job to defend the situation. By him getting clipped, it allows him a free run right into the box, and that's where, in my opinion, that should be a foul. Um, in terms of rules and regulations, I'm not sure, but I thought that was a foul. And the penalty, in this day, it's a penalty because of the way. VAR and, and the handball rule is uh, I think he's unfortunate with it It might be the last chance we all get to speak to you before that window shuts so is your man the number 9 staying and is there any chance you're getting anybody else in? Don't expect to lose anybody um, in terms of ins it's well known Scott Fraser's somebody that we're trying to bring but we'll see how that develops change of manager and stuff is if it's holding up and then it'll be reactive we've got a great squad of players and there's guys who haven't played as much as they want and if they're looking to go and we can do it and maybe replace then we might do it but for, there's nobody desperately wanting to leave but I can understand if they want more football but we're not planning on being busy what was the message the penalty uh, who was taking it Shanks I said last week Shanks will decide um, and in the moment and by the way it was a pressure penalty when you've missed your last three the delay in taking it and I think Grant was the coolest man on the pitch so it was, as you've seen for the finish it was some finish so that just eased everything it made us be able to play the way, we want, the way we want to and and we did What was the message to the team that half time? Well, it was just a fight it was similar up at Pataudry when they were really aggressive on setting balls and, and if they could make contact with you they would and they kind of outnumbered us a bit and we were reactive I felt so it was just changing that slightly but I thought at the start of the second half before we scored we'd do well um, and and then the penalty kind of calms it. He said, that bit of skill for that second goal. It shanks. See it all the time. He's, he's, he's not just a threat in the box or six yard box, it's some threat. Anywhere in the final third, he's a threat. Um, and again, there's, there's been questions asked. He's missed three penalties, he's got. Shanks will go through periods of no scoring. But the one thing I know is he won every game being a threat, and today was that day again. Do you think he's enough finalist to do it? Because it did look as if he's no... Similar to the one a few weeks ago where they just boom. But that's that's an instinct. That's the easy part for Shanks. That, that's the part that makes him different to a lot of strikers is because he doesn't need to overthink it. He sees it all happening. He understands the, the back lift he needs. He understands the, the trajectory of the ball. And, and that's why he's banging goals in for fun. What about Travis if he doesn't go to Germany now? Still a lot of time. Um, and he's... I think he's different to all the strikers and I've worked closely with them so I think that gives him an edge to say to be picked but it's like now we're on a good run we've got good results our form's really good but we can be better and Shanks individually and every player here has got from now to the end of the season to keep improving keep getting better so it could be an hour really good season You sent Vargas out to warm up quite early on were you quite attempted to change it in the first half or something like that? I was frustrated um, with a couple and I would have changed it if I thought I needed to but we, we managed to start making some better decisions which um, made me not. A long way to go but you're in a very good position in first place at the moment, how do you view it? Yeah, very good position, our, our form recently and that's been really good, after a slow start, after getting battered in the press, we've continued to just go on with our business, internally we are comfortable and we're getting our rewards from that. We don't panic this last week. We don't panic at Spartans. We keep playing. We keep playing to the end and we get our goal. 2-0 down, we we'll come back. Um, but we've got to see it as... Uh, are the, any man, any successful player's mentality is always right. I'm doing well. How can I get the next bit? How can I get the next bit? Whether you're a young player getting in the first team, whether you're shanked scoring goals, how can you be better? 
we we are building that mentality, and that's what we need to have. Just wanted to ask about um, Philip Clement's comments about Alex Lowry saying he was he didn't know about his injury. Is was that a surprise to you? I think that's more an internal communication for their departments rather than us. For any loan player, you, there's nothing that can be done um, without the parent club having to say so. The whole way through for Alex, um, Rangers are in control of it, so that must be a communication issue between them. When you were getting back up in the press, what's the key to this run? What was the significant thing that you were staying resolute or I your team responded to? I've experienced it as a player. I've had managers that come in that are totally different to the previous one or there's a change. It takes time. Every, the, the, we're unfortunately in an era of instant success and when that's not happening, you're done. You're no good enough. I, that gave me lots of confidence. A, a lot of our players day to day were we're improving and we've seen it day to day. The hardest part is going and doing it on a Saturday when there's loads of people watching you and that nerves come into it. But once you can start dealing with that and you trust yourself, you improve. Um, but then at the end of the day, I go home and I've got a great wife and two kids that are more important than any football. Yeah, a couple of new contracts recently as well. Like, uh, yes, see, we're getting there. There's a few that will be getting announced in the next couple of weeks, which is brilliant. But again, that all adds into why we're successful now and it's took a bit of time because everybody's buying into it. Everybody wants to be here and we reward people when they're doing well, not just when their contracts are up or when, this, uh, when there's a necessity to do so. You've got to keep people hungry and when they're hungry, you've got to show them the reward of their hard work.